excuse me, I must go to roll off stage. Please welcome the Desert Fox, Seth McFarlane. <laughs> Hey, help me keep up with this Nancy Kerrigan thing. Well, okay, it's going a bit dated, but that's okay. I, I, I was looking at a picture of, of Nancy the other day, and I, and, I, and I couldn't help but notice the size of her teeth. And I think that I think that if the skating thing doesn't work out, that maybe you know she could really make a couple bucks, you know, as a bottle opener. <laughs> I, I uh, was on vacation a, a couple a couple weeks ago. Went home for a little bit, take a take a rest from a. My uh, artist career at RISD got a chance to catch up on the latest issues of National Geographic. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'm just gonna take my glasses off. But my, 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 yeah, that's right, my Superman impression. <laughs> Doesn't that seem a little ridiculous? That, like, that, like, you know, she doesn't know who he is when he's wearing the glasses, but when he takes them off, you know, I don't know, it just seems a little unusual. Would it be the same if it was like contacts? You know, like, oh, hold on a second. <laughs> It's you, Superman! <laughs> oh, man, I tell you. I was watching a, uh, a television the other day. I happened to catch that old commercial. You remember that commercial that Jimmy Stewart used to do where he would, uh, you know, his grandkids would come in from the freezing cold and he would have his uh, bowl of home cooking soup ready for them, hot and ready? Uh, come on in here, kids. Uh, try, try some of this home cooking soup. It's, it's good. Yeah. Yeah, it tastes, tastes good and it's, and it's good for you, too. Yeah. And it's like, you know, I mean, it's just, these kids are freezing cold, their noses are running, they could use, you know, children's time at all, maybe, they're catching cold. But no, it just gives them the soup. Now, can any problem be solved with a bowl of this stuff? I, I don't know. Oh, come on, oh, geez, you're, you're pregnant with triplets and you're only 12 years old. Well, come on, come here, sit down, I'm trying to show this home cooking soup. Ah, uh, there is some, there is some good. Uh. Yeah, you've been tested HIV positive, I should so, so, so clear that right up. There you go. Oh. All right. Okay, I'm sorry. Oh, boy, I tell you. I was looking at one of those, uh, what do you call it, those hallusions? You know what I'm talking about? Yes. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Those paintings that supposedly, it, it looks like, you know, this mess of paint, and supposedly if you stare at it long and hard enough, you can see, you know, an image. and. I can't see a fucking thing. You know, I don't know whether I don't know whether mine was was broken. You know, there's like there's like little there's like kids. You know, little tiny kids. They're going up there going. I see two coyotes and a baby coyote sitting under the moon. You know, it's like oh, I see a spaceship. I'm just like uh, I see a a, a, a wet sheep uh, <laughs> sucking on a, a a loaf of Korean exchange students. <laughs> Or, or something. <laughs> I don't know what that's all about. I, I, got a, I got a letter from Carl Sagan, not to me personally, but from uh, the Planetary Society, which he heads up. And uh, you know, I'm I, you know I'm asking money to uh, to uh, you know help out the space program. And don't get me wrong, I'm all in favor of the space program. It's just ever since this Mars probe thing, I just I, I haven't been able to you know I just lost a little bit of respect for it. And I just you know a probe just doesn't get up and walk away. And the only thing. I can think of it may have happened to it is... Well, let's just say I have a lovely new set of NASA hubcaps on my Peugeot! <laughs> Somewhere off in the distance, a dog barked. Thank you. I was down at, uh, at uh, Mardi Gras down there in New Orleans for, uh, for uh, spring break, and it was kind of... They're not fun, they were just totally nuts. Because you go down there and you catch these beads from the floats and you take them down to the French Quarter and the women there will show you their driver's license photos. And uh, <laughs> and it's like, it's totally nuts. I mean, people just piss drunk all over town. And, uh, and uh, you know, I actually saw three guys just completely blitzed off their asses walking up the street and one of them says to the other one, No way, man, you ain't been circumcised. <laughs> How that conversation got said. You know, it's like being down, being down there is being like, it's being like in the middle of a, of a Reagan press conference to me. You know, like where nothing is coherent at all. You know, you say, you say, 
Uh, Mr. President, your, your administration has largely ignored the uh, problem of homelessness in, in this country. Uh, what are your plans to deal with that in the future? Well, I remember when I was little, I had a basset hound named Eugene. <laughs> One day Eugene ran away, and we thought for sure he'd gone for good. Then one day, about six months later, we heard a dog barking outside the front door. We opened the door, and sitting there, wagging his tail, was a very heavy dog. And we would have taken him in, except we'd never seen him before. <laughs> Next question. Uh, sir, uh, environmental protection, the environment is going to hell and everyone knows it. Uh, your administration has is, is, is not given this issue the proper attention that it deserves. Uh, how would you respond to that? Well, I, I remember one time when I was back in Hollywood. It was the 1950s, I think, or was it the 40s? I don't remember when I was at the uh, MGM studio commissary. And I got myself a meatball sandwich. <laughs> Now let me tell you, that thing looked tasty, so I take a bite of it. And what should happen but one of those gold darn meatballs falls onto the floor. When I leaned over to pick it up, and dang if I didn't find a quarter. <laughs> so I sort of considered this my lucky meatball sandwich. Well, by the time I got to the White House, people were telling me I should get rid of it. But I know better. Then one day I woke up and it was gone. And I looked everywhere, but I couldn't find it. And it turned out that gopher had gotten into the house and eaten it up. So I went down to the White House cafeteria and got myself another one. And you know, it tasted even better than the first. Next question. <laughs> sure you guys weren't waiting for that one to be over for you. No. <laughs> Just keep going, we want more. I don't know. Well, anyway, I tell you, I was uh, I was uh, watching uh, Star Trek the other day for a change. I'm a big Trekkie, you know. You know, I love it. I'm a big fan of Shatner, all the guys, you know. Can't be wrong, Sunday. Eight seven six nine one one. While on a routine survey mission in the Beta Caribbean sector, the Enterprise has come upon a strange anomaly. Uh, Captain, I. Uh... Since sort of can't seem to uh, pick up exactly what it is. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, hey, what's the deal with Captain Kirk? I was going to put on weight, let me tell you. Hey, you better watch them both on, Shabby. You're coming through time zones. Gee, you have to deal with that. <laughs> but uh, the, the thing that always struck me as odd about the show was that there was never, like, like you know, they would have all these incredible adventures. But they would never discuss them afterwards, you know? You'd never see, like, you know, Bones and, and Spock and Kirk, and, you know, sitting in the ship's lounge, you know, just see Kirk saying, hey, you guys remember the time I was coming up to the transporter and I got split into two halves? I'm like, one of you was good and the other one was evil. That was fun. like, I'm like, hey, oh, man, dude, remember it last week? Oh. You guys remember last week? Have I told you about this? Remember last week when we, uh, we, we accidentally got stuck in a parallel universe where there were like duplicates of ourselves, but they were all evil and nasty and stuff? It was nuts. It was nuts. You know, we, we, we had trouble getting back. We got back, though. It was cool. It's about a spot. Remember the time you died? <laughs> oh, good. Oh, man. Oh, man. It's good that you're, you're back, though. It's cool. I don't know. I don't know what to do with that. Well, speaking of speaking of impressions, I got a little something I'm gonna try here tonight. I tried this the other night. The Rizzy Comedy Night over in the tap room there it seemed to work pretty well. This is something I call blend ins. Oh. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you, person over here. Um, this is where I start off, you know, with one voice and it sort of fades into another one, and by the end you can sort of guess who it is. So it's something that goes something like this. Mr. Reagan, I remember where you left your wallet. Yeah, I, I just had it, but I can't recall what I did with it. And I don't really have the time to go looking right now because I gotta, you know, sort of get out over there, over there in the golf course and start looking for gophers. Cause you know, I sort of push you. I gotta get out gophers over there. You got, you got big trouble over here. Trouble over here, Barnett. 
you know, or, or, or say something like, the name stinks. <laughs> I'm afraid I can't say going up to this evening. Because it appears that the elevator seems to be broken tonight. That's exactly what happened. You had it made or not. Let me make that perfectly clean. Makes sense. Makes sense favor, I'll tell you. Or, you know, or else, or else, hey, come, come over here, sit, sit down, have, try some of this home cooking soup. It's, it's good, good for you, too. Unless, unless, of course, you know, want to, unless, of course, you, it's, you know, you sort of like think it sucks. Home cooking soup sucks. I think they must, like, check out Jimmy's store. <laughs> yeah, 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 he's like, he's like old and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I bet like if you look at his butt, it looks like a road map of Massachusetts. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Or, uh, or, uh, okay. Or how about this? This is the last straw, Jetson! You're fired! <laughs> I'm sick and tired of your stunts, Jetson! Coming into work late! Oh yeah, and then there was the time you dropped Winchester's drawers in the OR. I'm telling you, Pierce. I had to believe I was mad after that time, but deep down inside, I was laughing to beat all hell. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Seriously, I like the sound of that. Speakers, I know if that man works for me for works for that other company across the street, the one that's responsible for producing Saturday Night Live <laughs> with Lee McCarthy. Bill Hartman, <laughs> Maria Jackson, <laughs> Davis Miller. <laughs> you unlock this door with the key of imagination. Behind it is another dimension. A dimension not only of sight and sound of mind, of shadow and substance. Of things and ideas, but by all means, I try to not go in there, or else it would seriously disrupt the very fabric of the state. Ah, that, that Christopher Lloyd is a funny guy. Can I understand this? That, 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 is, that is good stuff. That is really good stuff. And uh, I'm sorry to tell you that I am leaving the tonight show. I'm sorry to turn to reveal that to you, but. There is someone else who's going to replace me, and he's uh, right here right now. And his name is uh, Kurti Frog. And, uh, hey, oh, uh, Kurti Frog here. It's, uh, it's uh, please don't need to be your name. There's something. There's something. Let's see what we got here. Oh, okay, now for a completely obscure Scooby Doo impression. I'm starting to think, speaking of, uh, speaking of politics, I'm starting to think that, Bill, that uh, excuse me, Al Gore and Doug Llewellyn might be the same guy. <laughs> you know, it's like, Bill, uh, excuse me, George Bush's policy of trickle-down economics cannot be allowed to continue. Where has he got Doug Llewellyn? How do you think Judge Wapner will decide this case? <laughs> will he find for the defendant, the Acme Jetpack Company, or for the plaintiff, Wiley Coyote? <laughs> I don't know what that's all about, but uh, I don't know. Al, Al Gore seems to me, it's just, you know, the guy is brilliant, but he's so brilliant that I'm sure in school he was just, you know, ostracized beyond belief. You know, they, you know people come up and say, hey Al, hey Al, what you writing there? Um, stories. <laughs> Science fiction stories about visitors and other clients. Let me read one. Oh no, no, I never let anyone read my stories. Why, why not? Huh? What if they didn't like them? What if they said I was no good? I don't think I would take that kind of rejection. What I think too is, is Bill Clinton seems exactly like the kind of guy who would have bullied Al Gore. You know? But hey, there was doing something. Do you need some extra credit work there? 
you learn, you learn outside the classroom? Is that what you're doing? Keep your fucking hands down. I heard about this guy who, uh, actually, speaking of geeks, who like took the time to actually measure what Barbie's purport Barbie, as in the doll, what her proportions would be if she were like a real person. I mean, what the fuck is going on? Yeah, this guy, I mean, there's some guy sitting around in his apartment, you know, you know, sees a Barbie commercial on television. Hey, that Barbie sure is pretty. <laughs> names that they come up with with these barbies. You know, you got like party time Barbie or you know ballroom tux Ken. You know, how about like Hitler Youth Ken, you know? <laughs> That's kind of along the lines of it. But uh, you know, or like or like loose and easy skipper. You know, <laughs> or, you know PMS PJ. Or, I don't know. Or you know, give like celebrities, you know, Robert Robert Packwood, give him his own doll. Itchy fingers Bob. You know? Or like, you know, seamstress Lorena. Let's see, let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh yes, hollow headed Kurt. That's right. That sounds more like a garbage pail kid than anything else though, I think. It's a wow dance. My my grandfather though, my grandfather, the thing about Barbie dolls was they're amazingly sexist. My grandfather was a sexist himself. You know, he used to have this thing he used to say, My son, you just remember this. A woman is nothing but a life support system for a vagina. <laughs> Okay, okay, great. <laughs> whatever, whatever you say. Okay. Hey, you all seen this Schindler's List? Yeah. yeah. Great movie, great movie, Schindler's List. It got me thinking, though. I mean, I noticed Hitler wasn't actually in this movie. But it got me thinking, what do you think the stupidest thing about the guy was? I mean, was the mustache, basically. I mean, because when you think about it, Hitler got up every morning, you know, went to the mirror, looked at himself in the mirror, just like... <laughs> Whereas Charlie Chaplin and like Oliver Hardy were doing this as a joke, you know? They're like, oh man, people are gonna get a gas out of this. They're gonna love this. But it's it's nice. Okay. <laughs> yeah, right down. We just go into the next speed. So yeah. Now, aren't about the new PC Lucky Charms that they're coming out with? Politically correct Lucky Charms? Do you drink? Yellow moons, iron stars, green clovers, blue diamonds, purple horseshoes, and pink triangles. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Rachel. Growing from somewhere out there. I, uh, let's see, airline travel is, a, is a, I do a lot of that, I do a lot of uh, traveling on airlines, and I think uh, the thing that uh, it strikes me as odd is that what good is a seatbelt really going to do you? <laughs> they always get the sign going, fasten seatbelts. I mean, what is it, like the pilot's got to suddenly jam on the brakes for a beer or something? I mean, it's, it's not going to happen, you know? And like, you can tell that a lot of these airline workers are just fed up with their jobs and they just hate it. Like, I was on one flight one night. Stewardess goes, all right, please direct your attention to the front of the cabin. Should we find ourselves in an emergency situation, the first thing you want to do is stop screaming. <laughs> <laughs> or like, you know, and, 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 and you know you're in trouble when they say, all right, we'd like to welcome two of our first time flyers on this flight here today, the pilot and the co-pilot. <laughs> you, know, you know that's bad. And those pillows that they give you, those pillows and the blankets, that are just tiny, these microscopic things. You know, she brings them over, you know, you know, I'm like, excuse me, I asked for a pillow, I think you gave me a velament. I don't know, the blanket, like I'm looking for a Bazooka Joe kind of thing. I don't know what the, what the deal is with that. Hey, one experience I one experience I had yeah. when, I was, when I was flying, I was on my way to this rugby match and ah, it's not that interesting for you. <laughs> well anyway, okay. But uh, Motels, motels, that's another, that's another big one for me. It's a lot of traveling, so I stay in a lot of motels. Motel 6, well, who came up with this name? Motel 6, it's like a sequel to a B-horror film, you know? Okay, okay, oh, thanks guys, yeah, thanks a lot, okay. Okay, saving some bad motels, bad jumping motels, save this one motel, they, they, they stole my car, which I thought was sort of... Noisy too, noisy too, one thing, that's the thing about living in 
living in the city, there's like all these noises. And the one that does it for me the most, the one that really grinds my gears, is these car alarms. These car alarms that make like 80 billion different sounds. 80 million different sounds. And it's just like, he's lying there in bed in the middle of the night, all of a sudden you just hear this. Slim Whitman CD, and I swear I'll belt you. <laughs> you know, or like you know, you go to you go to you go to check your alarm clock in the morning, and it's got this all added. You go, maybe it's six thirty, maybe it's not. My mom would like that joke. I don't know. Anyway, oh, anyway. no man, I happened to catch one of those uh, '70s '70s uh, sex movies on television the other day. You know the ones where like. You, basically, the music will tell you when somebody's about to score because you get like this, honey, honey, where are you? I'm in the bedroom. <laughs> and the chase music, they got this generic chase music they use for every movie. And it's like, <laughs> They said the Black Ness monster has now been proven to be a fake. This is true. They finally, the guy, the guy on his deathbed. I, I, I don't write this stuff. I just tell it. But anyway, they found that the guy who like supposedly came up with this myth, who was like responsible for perpetuating this myth, on his deathbed, revealed that it was false. I'm just wondering how this happened. Or was the guy just lying there on the verge of death? And he goes, guys, I can't keep this up anymore. But, like, it's just a puppet, so you go. <laughs> but, uh, no, 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 no. I got dogs. Any dog owners here? No. Oh, dog man. Yeah, well, the, the, fun thing, the fun thing I like to do with, uh, with my dogs is that, you know, when you, you put, like, a, a dog's food down, like, you know, and he starts eating it, and then if you go and reach for it, he makes this growling sound, like, at exactly the same time as you move your hand, so you can pretend like you're the one making them do it, so it's like, <laughs> it's a lot of fun. Believe me. <laughs> with me, uh, with me uh, right now, the, the big thing, uh, the big thing that goes on at, uh, at my house between me and my dog is the leg humping thing. And uh, and people are telling me I should stop because the dog is starting to walk with a limp. <laughs> You ever taking the time, taking the time to look at a dog's penis? You ever taking the time? Look, otherwise known as old Crayola. What? All right, this is my big question about a dog's penis. Where does it go? Where does it go? Sometimes it's not there. Sometimes it is. It hides. It's like this retractable car radio antenna. It, like sometimes it comes out. It's like and it goes back, and you never know when it's going to be there. When it's not going to be there, it's just there's no telling. Oh, man, I don't know. Cats. Cats. Cats are uh, a lot of fun, too. I own some cats. Cats, the funny thing about cats is that little round spot that passes for a, uh, a uh, you know what I'm saying, passes for their ass. And it's like this, and it's like this well, almost shaven area. You know what I'm saying? It's like, it's like got these sort of crusts. Like you would see in like a camera aperture or like a, or like a, or like a cake frosting tube. And it's like, Hey, listen, I'm a 
don't need you, but I just go, I, I don't need you guys. I can go back in my room and do this by myself. <laughs> but it's but it's hard fun like this. Yeah. But, uh, but uh, and, and for, for some reason, my mother was always, uh, my mother's like a big animal person in her house, and she was always the one who, who seemed to know, like, when the cat was in heat. You know, she'd be like, hey, don't let the cat out, she's in heat. Do not let the cat out, she's in heat. And, and there was, she would always seem to know when there was, like, you know, when there was a male cat around. Hey, don't let her out. She's in heat. I think there's a male cat out there somewhere. There's a male cat running around out somewhere there by the yard, and it's just going to be big trouble if you let her out, so don't do it. You know? I mean, how does she know? How the hell does she know? I mean, did she have problems with this cat before? Tell you, he was making a pass at me the other day, and what I did, I just showed him my wedding ring, and I cut him up real fast. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Big response out of that one. Hey, y'all you read that. I'm going to close with this joke. Y'all read the, uh, the uh, big Menendez brothers' uh, recent, recent development in that, uh, that little affair. What happened, what happened was, this is according to their testimony, this is supposedly true. What happened was that, uh, you know, obviously Eric and Lyle Menendez shot their parents, and what happened was that they shot their father, and then they went to their mother, because they were all out of ammo, and said, Mom, can we have some money to go get more ammo? I'm not making this up, this is true. So she says, fine, yeah, take some out of my pocketbook, because the mother was just not such a good keep money. And it's like, I mean, I equate this to coming home in like the afternoon. You walk into your apartment, and, and there's like a burglar unloading your television set. And he turns to you and he goes, oh, dude, thank God. I thought I was going to have to do this by myself. Can you grab that? It's like, so, okay, big finish. Thanks a lot, folks. <laughs>